Welcome to the lecture. If you want to become a certified software professional and you want to accelerate your career, you want to stand out on the job interview, you have to pass SOLIDWORKS certification exam. How to take this exam and how to pass this exam, find out on the end of this lecture. If you find this video useful, click like and subscribe. In this exercise, we have to put together assembly caliper. So we're going to use here coincident mate, concentric mate, and width. So in the first step, we have to make origin visible, and then we have to insert part one and fix it to the origin. So let's go to the SOLIDWORKS. Let's go here. Let's make our origin visible. Like this. Now let's go to assembly tab. Let's go here, insert components. Let's choose part one. Let's fix this part one to assembly. So you can just move your mouse right to the origin and the part will snap right into the place. Like this. And now we can hide this origin. Now let's see the step two. So in the step two, we have to insert part two and we must create coincident relation between those two faces. And then we have to create a width made between the following faces to insert part two into part one. So here, this face and this face, purple, and this face and this face. So those faces we're gonna use for the tool width. So let's go to SOLIDWORKS. Let's go to insert components. Let's go with a part two inside like this. So the first step that we have to do here, we have to define coincident relation between this face here and this face here. So let's go here to the mate. Let's select this face here and on the part one, this face here, like this. Let's click OK. Like this. Now we can move this part two, but only on this face. Like this. And now we have to go to the advanced mates. And we have to use a tool width. Here for the width selection, we're going to choose this face here and this face here. And for its app selection, we're going to choose this face here and this face here, like this. And now we can just simply click OK. And now we can move this part 2 along part 1, like this. Now let's see the next step. In the step 5, we have to insert part 3, this one here and define coincident relation between this face here and this face here. Then we have to define the concentric relation between the hole on the part three, this one here, and hole on the part one. As well, we have to define concentric relation on the other hole of the part three and part one here. So let's go to SOLIDWORKS. Let's go to insert. Let's go with part three here, this one. Let's get closer. And now let's go to mate. Let's define the coincident relation between this face here on the part one and this face here on the part three, like this. And now we have to define concentric relation. So we're gonna choose this face inside here and this face inside this hole, like this. Let's click okay. And the second coincident relation is between this face here and this face here. And let's click okay. And now if you try to move this part 3, it's not possible, it's completely fixed. So now we have to insert part 4, and we have to define concentric relation between cylinder of the part 4, this one here, and the hole of the part 1. And then we have to define coincident relation between this face of the part 4 and this face of the part 3. And then we have to repeat the steps 8 and 9 to insert and make the second instance of the part 4, or we can use a mirror tool. So let's go to SOLIDWORKS. Let's go to insert components. Let's go with part 4. Like this. Now let's go here to mate. Let's make concentric relation between this part here and this part here like this. Let's click OK. And now let's define coincident relation between this face and this face here. 
And now we're going to create a second instance of the part 4. So you can hold Ctrl, click on the part 4, and you can drag here another instance of the part 4, like this. Now you can release the mouse, and now you can release Ctrl, like this. Now let's go here to the mate. Let's repeat the procedure. Let's define concentric relation here, like this. Let's click OK. Now we have to find our part 4. It's here. Let's drag him here on the surface. And now let's define here coincident relation between this face here and this face here. Let's click OK. Let's click OK here. And this is it. Now let's see what is the next step. Now we have to insert the part 5 and define coincident relation between the following faces of the part 5 and the part 1. And then we have to define concentric relation between part 4 and the hull of the part 5, as we can see here. And here we have to define the second concentric relation between second instance of the part 4, this one here, and the second hull of the part 5. So let's go to SOLIDWORKS. Let's go to INSERT. Let's go with the part 5. Here. Like this. Now let's go here to the move component and let's rotate our part to this side because we want the dot fillet edges will be outside, not inside to this face. Now let's go to mate here. Let's define coincident relation between this face here and this face here, like this. Now let's define concentric relation between the part 4 here and this hole here, like this. Now let's rotate this, and now let's define the second concentric relation between the cylinder of the part 4 and here the hole of the part 5, like this. Let's click OK. Now let's go and let's see what is the next step. Now we have to define weight constraint free relation between faces of the part 1 and faces of the part 2 as shown. And with this, we limit the movement of the part 2. So here we can see we're going to choose those two faces of the part 2 and this face here and this face here of the part 1. So let's go to the SOLIDWORKS. Now if we try to move this part, so we can move this part, as you can see, through part 1. And this is not what we want. We want to limit this. We want that this part will hit here, the part 1 will stop. And when this part will hit this part here, will stop as well. So let's go here to the mate. Let's go to advanced mates. Let's use a width. So here we're going to choose this face here. And we're going to choose this face here, like this. And for a tab selection, we're going to choose this face here. And this face here. But now here we have a constraint centered, and this is not what we want. We want to move this part, so we're going to change this to free, like this. Now let's click OK. Now let's try to move this part. Now we can see that our part stops here and stops here. And this is what we want. In the next step, you have to insert part 6 and define concentric relation between the hole on the part 2 and the cylinder of the part 6. Then we have to define the width relation between faces of the part 2 and faces of the part 6. So let's go to SOLIDWORKS. Let's go to INSERT COMPONENTS. Let's choose part 6. Like this. Now let's go to MATE. Let's define concentric relation between the hole of the part 2 and the cylinder here of the part 6, like this. Now let's go to advanced mates again, and we're going to use a width. So here, for the width selections, we're going to choose this face here, and this face here. And for a tab selection, we're going to choose this face here. Let's go to the other side, and this face here, like this. Let's click OK. 
And now we can only rotate this part as you can see here. In the step 17, we have to insert part 7 and define concentric relation between the hole here on the part 2 and the part 7 as shown. And then we have to define coincident relation between the face of the part 2 and face of the part 7 as shown. This face and this face here, the bottom face of this part. So let's go to insert components. Let's choose part 7. Like this. Now let's go here to the mate and let's define concentric relation between the hole of this part and here of this cylinder. Like this. And this is not the orientation that we're looking for. So we go here, mate alignment. Let's select here aligned. Like this. Let's click OK now. And now we have to define a coincident relation between this face here and this face here. Let's click OK. Like this. Now let's click OK here. And this is our assembly that we're looking for. So now as you can see, we can move this part too from this face here to this face here. To the other side. Like this. If you're tired of watching on YouTube videos and buying cheap courses who always leave you wishing and wanting for more, and you want to have personal support to learn the SOLIDWORKS from the absolute zero to the professional level to improve and start your career, check the link below and visit our Super SOLIDWORKS Accelerator Academy. As well, if you like this video, click like and subscribe.